Okay, so Pi News episode 42, and I'm running this on my Pi 4 8 gig, and I'm running the new version of Chromium OS. Thanks to Matthew from France for letting me know about this. Uh, it's a big upgrade, but I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, but I was just playing Tomb Raider uh, on Stadia, and as you can see, it's nice and responsive. It looks really decent. So let's switch over to screen capture. So I was looking at Stadia uh, because I had an email uh, so I'm not a, a Stadia subscriber, I don't pay any money for Stadia, I have bought some games, Tomb Raider was one of them and it was very very cheap, that's why I bought it, because I like the game as well. Um, but uh, in this, there was an interesting thing that came up, uh, and it kind of applies to the Pi, because you can use it on, on the Pi. Um, but Riders Republic came up here as something new to buy, now the game is £60, and uh, it looks like the sort of game I'd like, I've seen various different videos on it. But uh, what interested me was down the bottom here, uh, if I scroll down, free trial, play the full game for 120 minutes. So if I click on that, the thing about this is because it's cloud gaming, the game is there straight away. So I haven't clicked on this before. And as you can see, time left, one hour 57. And it starts up super quick into the game. There is nothing apart from the normal menus you'd get from a game. Let's skip past all this. It's a long intro cutting into my two hours play time. <laughs> Done any of the buttons or anything yet but uh, as you can see it's working anyway i'll come off this because obviously if i keep playing it i'll keep staying with it and uh, yeah it looks like it's pretty decent now oh, that's x's jump whoa let's close that down okay first up brilliant story from tom's hardware raspberry pi 400 gets 8 gig of ram in diy hack uh, so 200.3 millimeter size solder joints and a spare pi is all you need so obviously if you've got a pi with 8 gig i thought they used the pi 4 8 gig but it's actually the Compute Module 4. So if we scroll down, uh, this is a picture of the Pi 400 without the RAM chip. And if we click on the Reddit link, oh, they've called it uh, Pi 800, so that's what I'll put in the description. Uh, and the Reddit user is on here, so posted by, uh, or user Pi 800. So you can see Compute Module 4, 8 gig. Now that's not gonna be a cheap uh, piece of equipment to be able to take apart. And if we skip through, all the details are in here. And you can see nice detailed photos of all the information. There's a big story on there as well. I won't go through that, but I'll put a link in the description if you want to have a look at it. There it is removed from the Compute Module 4. Look at this. Look how tiny everything is. So that's the Pi 400 waiting for its new RAM. And there it is in place. And here it is all plugged in. I've used my Pi 400 uh, without the keyboard bit. You can use it as like a standalone board, just a different shape board. And it's lovely and slim. And all the checks are there as well. But yeah, loads of information. And also someone says here, uh, reballing 200 balls manually. Definitely more patience than I have. What equipment did you use? And the poster has uh, put all the information of all the equipment. But uh, I'll put a link in the description. But yeah, super impressed with that. Next up, more Tom's hardware. Uh, so I saw on the official update to Raspberry Pi OS. So Raspberry Pi OS has gone to Debian 11. And I did a video uh, day before yesterday. And it is very impressive. The 64-bit version not so good at the moment, uh, not like uh, Debian 10 was, but it's early days and it's in beta. I found the 32-bit version was excellent, although I have had a few comments in my video saying that VNC is incredibly slow on it and there was something else that wasn't working. So it takes a while for the operating system to get completely stable. So if you're using it as your daily driver, depending on what you're using it for, you might want to stick to the old one for a bit, but I did find that it does perform very, very well for me. Now I also mentioned uh, about, uh, I spotted that it came up with 1.8 gigahertz, uh, which was I thought, I thought was very strange um, because I was using a Pi 4 8 gig and the stock speed is 1.5 gig. I looked in the config.txt in my video and it didn't say anything about it, but actually they put in a, an extra line uh, which means that if you've got a slightly newer version of a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, it will automatically select 1.8 gigahertz uh, when you install the operating system. Now you can always overclock and you can change anything you want, but it was uh, it was just interesting that it detects what the chip is and if it sees that it's the newer version, it will automatically give you 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, the story came out just after my video or it might come out while I was actually doing my video. But if I go into the config.txt of this version of Chromium OS, and I can do that by doing, uh, so function, alt, and F1, 2, and 3. You can see you get this. Uh, if I type in Chronos, this is something which is added to this version of Chromium OS. Uh, and then I do uh, sudo edit pi-config. You can see in here, 
I tried, I put this in, Leap ESP video, just so that it reminded me, added run as fast as firmware. So this is the line, uh, arm underscore boost equals one. I tried that in Chromium OS and it didn't make the difference. It didn't run at 1800. Um, so maybe it's something just for Raspberry Pi OS or something else they have to do. Um, but I have, I am running this system with an over voltage of eight and arm frequency 2147. So I've overclocked it anyway, but it was interesting that that arm underscore boost didn't work for Chromium OS, whereas the normal overclock settings do. So let's exit out of that, Control X. And uh, I have to do Control Alt and F1 to go back into Chromium OS normally. And just to confirm the overclock anyway out of interest, if I type in CPU up here and do CPU usage and diagnostics, it shows, and this is the Pi does this, uh, it, it misreports. So it's a 2147 overclock, but it always shows up as 2.2 gigahertz. So the overclocks have worked, but not in the way that it did the 1800. But uh, I mean, it's no big thing really if you've got an older Pi. I've got uh, a day one Pi 4, 4 gig, and uh, I overclock that regularly to, to 2, 3, and it runs absolutely fine. So it's not really a thing of, oh, I must get the one that supports the new 1800 frequency. The older board support it just fine, but it's nice to see that they added it because they realized it was capable and uh, you know, it gives you a little performance boost without you having to do anything. Next up, Eben Upton has done loads of interviews recently and uh, this one was particularly interesting uh, and I'll scroll down to one of the comments in here because I can't remember where it was in the video. Paul Smith, no Pi 5 for the Pi's 10th birthday. So uh, the Pi's 10th birthday will be February the 29th, 2022. Uh, it's been confirmed that there isn't going to be a Pi for that. So if you want a Pi 4 uh, or a Compute Module 4 or a Pi 400, don't worry about buying it and thinking there's going to be a Pi 5 very soon. It's certainly not going to be. Uh, it's certainly not going to be in the next three or four months. I don't know how much longer after that. Whether they're going to wait for a special date, um, but uh, obviously we've had loads of new things. I mean, the Pi 02W is amazing. Good news: there's going to be a Raspberry Pi store in London. Uh, unfortunately, it's only for a couple of days. Uh, so if we scroll down through this story, which is on the official site, uh, so Friday the 26th of November and Saturday the 27th of November, uh, all the details, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and it says here, and we have our fingers crossed for an appearance from Eben Upton around midday on the Friday. So you might bump into him while you shop. I think it's gonna be busy on that day. In Hacker Day, Raspberry Pi reads what it sees. Uh, so you can see here, uh, it actually reads text from photos. Raspberry Pi project does one thing, it finds arbitrary text in the camera's view and reads it out loud. The device is made from a Raspberry Pi and a camera and works by sending a still image from the camera to an optical character recognition program which converts any visible text in the image. And there's a video on there, I won't play it, but uh, again, there'll be a link in the description. And this looks cool. So it's a 3D printed, uh, high quality camera module and uh, it used to work with the Pi Zero but now it's got a Pi Zero 2 in it. It says it makes it a lot nicer and you can imagine the performance of the Pi Zero 2 is way, way better. On Facebook, I saw this post, uh, which just looked interesting. If you're looking to do a similar sort of thing to this, a bit more uh, character recognition. Had a small breakthrough in my Scrabble Python script. It uses Pi Camera, NumPy and OpenCV. And you can see here that it's basically reading the Scrabble board and then putting a digital representation on the screen. If you're looking to run Octoprint on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, you want to have a look at this post. I've got a little uh, video here. It's only nine seconds long, so I'll play it. But it looks like something goes wrong at the end. Uh, here we go, but not your printer, at least the detector worked. Yeah, my wife woke me up. Uh, not blame the Zero for build plate adhesion issues. I'm always asking for trouble trying to print things without brims. And last one was uh, also from Reddit uh, by Reddit user Jumpin. Uh, my experience so far with the Raspberry Pi Zero. So the user had trouble running certain software and uh, I've tried some Pi 3 software on my Pi 2 Zero. Some things work, some things don't. Um, but this little tip in here, uh, which is basically to copy the file. Uh, so this is from your boot directory and I'll show it in a minute, BCM2710 uh, RPI3. Uh, copy it to your desktop, or well, that's what I did, and then rename it to Pi Zero 2. You can leave the old file in there anyway. Uh, this is just kind of recognizing it and letting it boot up. Now, obviously it depends on the operating system and compatibility and things like that, but most things for the Pi 3 
uh, have quite a high likelihood of working. Um, so I need to kind of go through it and try. So let's shut down Chromium OS, but it has been very nice to do Pi News on this. It works very well as an operating system. And I can switch over to uh, Twister OS. So let's unplug this. I was using it with uh, an SD card in a USB reader only because this SD reader, which is an expansion one, I've used it loads. It seems to be failing a bit now, so I have got other ones, so I'm gonna swap it out. But let's boot this up. And I've got Berry Boot on an SD card, uh, so I think it's this one, which doesn't work on the Pi Zero normally. So let's pop it in uh, to this reader so we can have a look. And switch into screen capture. So if we go into the file manager, and then we can read that SD card that I've just plugged in. Go into the boot folder, and you'll find one that references a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so if we drag this over a little bit, uh, so this is the one we want, rpi-3-b.dtb. Now if you just copy that to the desktop and paste it, and then we need to change this so that it says 02W. So right click it and rename and it needs to be rpi-0-2.dtb dash dash So hit rename and then just drag it back in. It's not going to overwrite any files There you go and you can see we've got rpi-0-2.dtb uh, and that means that it will boot past the first stage uh, and it may get some other operating systems to work uh, and be more compatible. So let's just try it with Berry Boot and let's pop the SD card into the Pi Zero. So this is the Berry Boot SD card, HDMI and power. And let's switch back on. So normally Berry Boot doesn't boot on the Pi Zero 2W. Uh, it, I can't remember if it came up with a colored screen or it just came up with like a gray screen a bit like this. But now uh, it does work. So here we are in Berry Boot. And the good thing about it is that you can manually add from a USB stick an operating system. Now I haven't really played around with this loads, uh, but I did get Raspberry Pi OS Lite to boot uh, into Terminal. And uh, I haven't really tried much else. I've put Arch Linux on there, um, but uh, I haven't really played around with it to see if it works. And uh, if you want to add another operating system, I've got a separate video on this, but if you press and hold, left click and hold, copy OS from USB stick, and you can download them from Berry Server. So let me know what you get to work, either with Berry Boot or just using this method uh, to get the Raspberry Pi Zero working with images that weren't necessarily designed for it. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.